The Laundromat, Steven Soderbergh's second film for Netflix. Um, yeah, this wasn't even a film that was really on my radar. Um, you know, it's based off of the 2017 novel Secrecy World Inside the Panama Papers and really looks at um, how Meryl Streep's character in this, you know, experiences a loss of her husband on a trip in Lake George, which shout out the Capital Region for yeah. that, that <laughs> I guess, like uh, tragedy <laughs> at the beginning of the film. Um, and it looks like a couple of the scenes, especially with Schwimmer, were actually shot maybe in one of the bars up there, which is pretty cool. But um yeah, it really just looks at how the these people built these like fake um, insurance organizations to just rip people off and make a lot of money and uh, really affected people. And the whole like uh, the whole vibe. I mean, it feels very like big, big short to me with like Soderbergh pacing, so to speak. I guess. Um, especially like the way that they kind of jump around from person like each person. Um, how, what was your feeling on this? Cause I, I'm, I guess I'm trying to work out how I felt about the movie in general. Yeah, man. Um, it's funny cause on its face, Soderbergh, Streep, Banderas, Oldman it sells itself. Yeah. Y- yet coming out of the festival you were like, Oh, wait a minute. This is kind of muted. And the, the way it was being placed, you saw Netflix start, kind of took their foot off the gas in terms of any kind of push with this movie mm. and then it gets them really mixed reception um i'd say leaning negative and I that was a little perplexing and then when i watched the movie you know it's told in a series of vignettes and i liked the, most of the vignettes i thought i thought they're all pretty effective yet for some reason i never i never felt like the movie fully brought it around and it just, it didn't really, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I was really distracted for the whole movie. I don't know. Um, and like it ends in a very matter of fact in your face way with the message, which is, I guess it's fine. Like I get the message was pretty clear the whole time. I don't know if you need to really spell it out like that, but like we, we know the people that did this were really shitty. Yeah. And we know that that's still a case and that kind of exploitation in our government financial system is still prevalent today. Like, right. cool, got it. Don't think you need to drive that home for the people with consciences. Like, <laughs> got it. But I, I mean, I don't know, man. It just, I, I just, I just feel like I, maybe I just wanted something different than what I got. And if I watched it again, I'd appreciate it more. But like, I like again, like, like the China vignette in particular, I really enjoy. Yeah. And maybe I wasn't ready for it to jump around so much, and I felt like the through line was a little weak. Mm-hmm. Like Meryl Streep's whole presence in the movie and then lack thereof for a huge chunk of the movie kind of threw me for a loop because I thought yeah. she was kind of the lead of it. Uh, and I think, I think she's intended to be the lead and certainly the way that the story wraps up, I think you're made to believe that as well. It's funny because I, I almost feel like this movie should have just been Buster Scruggs. You know, like even just like sure. if you want to do the vignettes, just even make it more like this is a series of like twenty minute, thirty minute stories that I'm going to show. You know, even fifteen minute stories and with a general through line about you know the the Panama Papers and these um, these really terrible people and how it impacted people on all different levels. Um, but I feel like because the Soderbergh tried to make this such a cohesive piece it almost ended up falling more flat and like you said with the in your face way that streep wraps it up um it really just uh it really left me feeling like uh it didn't have like the the usual touch soderbergh has because i feel like even as recently as like high flying birds he does such a good job of like folding in these little nuances to it and really like creating this sense of like what's actually going on in this world why this is important but this just didn't really feel like him and I almost wonder if maybe he like I mean I don't I'm not sure if this is like a relationship with Netflix that um, that is what is like maybe working out the way he wanted to. I have no idea about any of that, but like, I almost, it almost feels like he kind of phoned this one in, in a sense to like 
just kind of get one out there. Maybe the production wasn't going the way he wanted, but just didn't feel like a Soderbergh movie to me. That was a little, a little bit disappointing, I think. Yeah, um, High Flying Bird, as you said, you know, that movie is just much more crisper. Yeah, what it's trying to say because it doesn't actually ever say what it means. Right, and I really like that movie. That's in my top uh, top twenty like this year. I think High Flying mm-hmm. Bird's fantastic, and once again shows just how much Soderbergh can do with very minimal production. Like he's such a boss when it comes to just making <laughs> yeah. movies. So I would never really denigrate him, even if sometimes I don't know if they fully land, you know. Mm-hmm. And like this is his fourth movie since twenty seventeen. Logan Lucky. Unsane, high flying bird, the laundromat. If only two of those are really awesome and one's just okay and one's kind of meh, that's pretty good. Yeah, good you batting know, like, average. He's a boss, oh, so absolutely. I'm not too I'm not too worked up about it. No, not at all. And you know, th- this is a movie that I mean, other than my Netflix subscription, I was gonna pay for anyway. Cost me nothing. Um, I, I still think there's a lot of fun moments. I even though I don't understand why I got so much time, I really liked the. The really the vignette about the the dad who was banging the roommate and stuff I found it <laughs> fascinating, um, right? And that's a thing too. Like I thought vignettes really fun and uh-huh. done well, and just like <laughs> listening to like the daughter just talk mad spicy the whole time. Yeah, it is great, but it's like man, this like is such a loose connection to the overall right. plot in terms of like the the companies and the trusts and stuff. And I'm like, fine. Like it's all good, but yeah. Um, how'd you feel about Oldman and Banderas? Clearly on set for like two days, yeah. Just talking to the camera, being the narrators, being the shepherding everything through. Um, when they I, first I thought, start talking, I, I thought it was a little uh, jarring because like, oh wait, they're clearly on a set right now. And mm-hmm. they walk down through the desert. I'm like, oh wait, actually, it's actually positioned to be obviously a set. Okay, cool. But yeah, I mean, what'd you think? Because like they're just kind of airy in a weird way but like they're clearly just hamming it up and enjoying themselves with the performance that it almost like gets in the way the fact that these are like a1 scumbags right yeah it was funny because i at first i almost was like is that really banderas and oldman like I, it's, it felt like such a almost like a shock seeing them playing that role and, and being so like hammy with it and like you said being so clearly on the set but i, I thought they were very fun and it it, it was kind of uh like a a trick in a sense because they are such terrible people in the movie um but i i thought i really liked that both of them in it um yeah and so many people like pop up like will forte just shows up for literally two seconds to get murked <laughs> like mm-hmm. that, that's his whole role it's and kind of chris about, parnell <laughs> yeah chris parnell i mean sharon stone's in this um our guy jeffrey wright we mentioned before is in this um wasn't the dad the dad who um, was banging the, the roommate, he was yeah. in Thrones. He was um, one of the uh, Astapor. No, um, he's one of the, those like slave lords Danny kills, I think. Yep. I recognize yeah, him. Yeah, I recognize him too. Uh, yeah, just a lot of people in it, man. It's, it's uh, too bad it, it wasn't better. Um, right. But, you know, uh, like you said, Soderbergh, uh, if this is if this is the worst that he can do, and it seems like it, it's still like there's still stuff there that's fun to watch. So shout out Soderbergh, we we respect you. 